discretion is advised. What was the most screwed up thing to come out in stores that's now discontinued? There was a doll with an eating function that ended up eating young girl's hair. The seller also failed, include how to turn off the doll in the instructions. So you can imagine the horror stories that went down because of that. There was a product called the worm getter in the 80s. Basically a rod that shocked the ground outside your house that for some reason caused worms to come out of the ground so you didn't have to buy them yourself. Yeah there was about 30 deaths attributed to this thing from people shocking themselves and it was recalled. 8. It was a diet candy that became popular shortly before HIV became widely known. Their slogan was get slim with AIDS. One executive refused to change the name of the company, saying something like we had the name first. Why can't they change the name of the disease? Edited for errors. A boating raft that flies behind the boat, think 20 in the air. The year I bought a boat they were the newest thing with a big video in the store on a big screen TV. I wanted one. But my wife said hell no. Our kids were about 8 and 11 at the time. The next spring I went in. And they were nowhere to be found. And I asked the salesperson about them. She said they were recalled due to injuries. What a shock. They still looked fun as hell. Many shoe stores used to have fluoroscope x-ray machines for customers to see how well their foot fit into the shoe they were trying on. They were often unshielded and were highly radioactive. My grandfather had a kit for kids to make their own lead soldiers. It came with the molds for the soldiers, a bunch of ingots of lead, and a cooking pot to melt the lead in. Then the child could pour the molten lead into the mold, wait for it to cool. Then play with their new toy. What fun. During the First World War, department stores, including Harrods, sold kits containing syringes, needles and tubes of cocaine and heroin. It was promoted as a present for friends on the front line shoot up to make life in the trenches more bearable and alleviate the horrors of war. I think my personal favorite was the Atomic Energy Lab. A children's toy that came with actually 238 and the tools to measure it. The kit also had instructions for how to prospect for uranium or in your own backyard. Lawn darts. These were a lot of fun, but were also just a terrible accident waiting to happen. Plastic fins and body with a weighted pointy metal tip. I can remember older kids whipping them at the schoolyard fence to see how deep they could go into the 2 multiply 12 pressure treated fence planks. When everything was Shrek themed, maybe I'm remembering it wrong. But back when Shrek 1, 2 were new they were insanely popular. Everything was green as a promo. Someone mentioned green ketchup. I remember green Shrek ketchup. I think Shrek waffles. I'm sure there was more promo food dyed green than that. There was a water gun toy that was voice activated. You would say fire, like you're shooting a gun, and then it would shoot water. Cue a number of false fire alarms, because kids are running around screaming fire 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 at the top of their lungs. I remember when you could buy that weird synthetic marijuana stuff in gas stations. It was right by the register. Apparently that stuff is crazy bad for you, and basically turns you into a zombie. I watched some YouTube series about things in the home that could kill you throughout history and apparently when electricity started being commonplace in homes, nothing was yet regulated and inventors went absolutely buck ducking wild with the products they put out. The series specifically mentioned a tablecloth with uninsulated electric mesh wiring running through the entire thing which you could plug in. And no, this was not designed to be a heated blanket. It was sold alongside other electrical accessories you could just plug right into the tablecloth by stabbing the prongs through the fabric and the mesh wiring. This obviously resulted in electrocution and fires. Candy cigarettes. We had them back in the 80s you could blow on them and the suja dust looked like smoke. I think they were actually gum. But either way target marketing at its best. Edit okay so I was unaware these are still around. I live in a rural area with very limited shopping. 
Interesting that these are still a thing. There used to be a toy called Jarts, and you tossed them, like you would horseshoes. They were 18 plastic arrows with fins and metal tips. You would stand about 40 from each other, and try to throw them into the other guy's circle on the grass. It was a recipe for disaster and there were a lot of lawsuits when the metal arrow tip would penetrate the kid's skulls. Ephedra. It was an herbal extract used as a weight loss pill that worked by causing your body to turn fat into energy as quickly as possible. Then idiots would sit on their couches, watching TV, while their body was being flooded with energy. The only muscle working was their heart so, yeah. Several people died of heart attacks. I took them when I went snowboarding. You'd be super warm and have endless energy. Going down the hill in 15 degree weather without a jacket. Leaving a steam trail behind you. It was great. Got to drink a lot of water though. A totally useful drug that was mismarketed and misused by misinformed people. Water Wiggle. Whammo Manufacturing Co. The maker of Water Wiggle stated. The recall was occasioned by the death of a four-year-old child. The youngster was playing with some other children in his backyard with a dismantled water wiggle, one from which the bell-shaped head had been removed or had come off. The exposed aluminum nozzle became lodged in his mouth and he drowned. Whammo stated that it had no knowledge of how or why the toy was dismantled or how the nozzle became lodged in the child's mouth. A water wiggle was involved in a similar death of a three-year-old boy in 1975. In my hometown we have two handball teams that plays at the highest level. One team plays in red shirts and one eye white. Therefore we refer to them as the whites and the reds. When power banks were new that did a collab with a store and released a power bank that had the text white power referring to the team color of course. How this got through the club management and the producers I can't understand. I wonder why Pepsi Clear didn't last. It was my fave soda of all time. I kind of wish I could try a new coke again and see if it was really as disastrously nasty as people sometimes refer to it. I remember drinking it several times, but of course it's been too long to remember the exact taste. I also suspect a lot of that may have been psychological. But I'm not gonna order a decades old can of new coke off ebay to find out. Pound puppies. Not the stuffed animal. The wood one that was in the shape of a dog. With a hammer. That was used to pound pegs into the dog. There was a turtle also. They removed pop rocks for a while. Because we as kids would slug a pack down with soda. Great burps. Some parents obviously were freaked out as they thought their kids would explode. They were back on the shelves once it was figured that they were pretty harmless. Anyone remember those twist braid machines for kids? You'd stick two strands of hair, stick one in each prong, and press the button. It'd twist the individual strands, then twist them together, and you'd use those bead clips to hold the braid together. Friends and I lost a lot of hair in those days. My mom once bought me an inflatable kite. It was probably around 1972-73. It was all puffy and had cool graphics emblazoned upon it of a design I cannot now recall. I was so excited to rush home and launch that bad boy. On its maiden voyage, it flew directly into the tippy top of a large oak tree like a goddamn guided missile, lodged on a sharp branch, and promptly ruptured, thus ending its short. Tragic life and disappointing and already neurotic. Anxiety filled small child. 30 seconds 30 goddamn seconds I had that thing in the air before it succumbed to its fate. Jesus. What a ducking letdown. There used to be a company in the UK that sold a range of wheelchairs under the brand Spaz. In the UK, that word was a popular insult term at schools. Being short for spastic which I believe is a form of cerebral palsy. There was also a range of bedroom furniture aimed at young teenage girls called Lalita sold by the very popular high street shop store Woolworths. Not sure how that got all the way through product development and marketing without anyone knowing what the word meant. I used to work at a toy store 20 years ago. There was a hard plastic Digimon character Tsunamon Piggy Bank that had a large blade like horn on his head. 
the blade was surprisingly pointed firm, and the large body meant that it would usually point upwards if left on the ground, waiting for some clumsy child to impale themselves on it. We used to jab other cowalkers with it until it made one on the list of the most dangerous toys made that year. After seeing that article we put it on long stick and jabbed each other from a distance. Safety first. My uncle bought this doggy toilet training kit. It was supposed to be used for dogs using an actual toilet. It came with a ramp for the toilet and the bowl was covered by a plastic shell. It was the dumbest ducking thing I'd ever seen in my life. But he was sold on it. Until. The plastic shell snapped while my uncle's poor Pomeranian was doing his business and fell into the toilet and couldn't get out. Poor thing nearly drowned, but my uncle was close by to save him. He complained to the store and they were all pulled immediately. Slap bracelets and silly bands. The slap bracelets were made of recycled tape measures and wrapped in cheap fabric. So one to many slaps and you get a small cut. They were huge in school, before they were banned due to being distracting. Silly bands were colorful. Tiny little bracelets that when left in an idle state would take the shape of an animal. They were perfectly harmless until some idiot mother heard from her friend's sister's landlord that the colors involved were representative of sexual acts. And, in short order, they were banned across the nation. In 1998. Sony had to recall hundreds of thousands of camcorders because they could allow users to see through clothes. It was when you added a popular filter to the camera that the world suddenly turned into a nudist colony. After the Japanese magazine ran the issue about the bug, it created a feeding frenzy among journalists around the world. Then, in our typical moral depravity, the demand for cameras with night shot soared. Many of them sold for 2500 instead of the original 600. Unsurprisingly, the camera opened up a Pandora's box of legal problems and privacy issues. Reporters found 12 different websites featuring peeping Tom videos and pictures of women who'd been out living a normal life. Sony immediately announced a recall of 700,000 cameras. It was the largest recall in company history. All of their vendors were frozen from distributing the handycams. Sony threatened swift disciplinary action against anyone who attempted to profit from the increased demand. The Gilbert U238 Atomic Energy Lab. From the A.C. Gilbert Company in 1950, it was a toy chemistry set for children that literally contained radioactive material. Radith or a drink from the early 1900s that contained radium. It was advertised as giving you vim vigor, and one from my own childhood that I cannot believe I actually owned the metal molder die caster where you literally melted metal and made your own toys. It ruled but man oh man I can't believe I actually owned this as a child. I mean 3D TVS. A lot of people still think there isn't such thing. I feel it was a bust. They came out and now you can't really find 3D TVs anywhere. Click subscribe. If you enjoyed this video.